A scale model replica of the full-size submarine I was going to build. So here's that scale model today. A lot of it is missing. This is what's left of it, unfortunately. I painted it a rust color brown because when I was building it, this is what it looked like at the time. As you can see, it's not too far off. This is what I used to design the sub. Make sure I knew it was going to perform as expected. Here you can see the scale model in the bathtub. The purpose of this scale model was to see how deep it would sit in the water. We got the air volume and the weight to match its larger size counterpart so I could have the closest data here with the scale model as a reference point. Now it takes a lot more than just a scale model for a proof of concept. We're talking about submarines here, so we're dealing with extreme pressures. So I also consulted with a variety of engineering companies in the process of designing the sub. So you see we have a front ballast tank, the aft ballast tank, and we have two ballast tanks on each side. Those four in the middle are the main ballast tanks. And as you can see from the scale model here, the real submarine sits pretty close to what that scale model did in the water. The scale model also allowed me to figure out how it was going to stay trimmed on the water and below the water because as the submarine goes under the surface its dynamics are going to change as far as its trim you have two big air pockets right here right now say this is the water it's sitting above the water as it goes underneath the water we now have two big air pockets back here as you can see these two towers aren't in the middle of the sub so this side's going to want to rise so those are some of the engineering challenges involved when you're designing a submarine its stability on the surface versus its stability underwater here is a picture of me in the first couple months building the submarine you can see i got the two conning towers on the main hall what you see on the side there are the ballast tanks those are 100 gallon propane tanks now i was able to use 100 pound propane tanks because the design of the sub was only 220 feet. So they didn't need to be anything special. We're not building a deep ocean diving vessel, but if you are looking for a one-way trip to the Titanic, subscribe and I'll pick a winner. Just kidding. Now, after I had the pressure hall put together and the conning towers installed, I had to build the frame. So the purpose of the frame on the sub, and you're gonna notice that this submarine is much larger than your, than your typical personal submarine. When I set out to design my own sub, I wanted it to look different. You can buy plans for personal submarines, like the K250 or the K350. They're cool and more capable, but I was going for a recreational submarine. I wasn't going for a search and recovery submarine or submersible. So in this picture, uh, I'm in the process of installing the frame while well, building the frame on the submarine's hull. So you have the conning towers on there. And the purpose for this is I needed a way to mount the fore and aft ballast tanks. And I was cosmetically going for that World War II battleship look when it was done so I wanted it to be as long as I could build it. I wanted to build something unique and different. Here I am inside the submarine, putting on a first primer coat in the early days just to keep it protected from surface rust. And uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty small in there, but it's actually not that bad. Here's the inside of the submarine when I was first mounting the control panels. This was a really exciting point during the design. I'd find myself sitting inside of it spending countless hours inside just imagining what it's going to look like when it's completed. The inside of the submarine after I painted, you can see a lot of the control panels are completed here. Absolutely beautiful. You can see the two batteries up in the front of the hull there. It runs off of three batteries and three 55 pound thrust motors. So the design of the panels inside the submarine that I was going for, you can see how that red power switch, there's a plate behind it with the four little screws on the side. That inspiration was taken from the panels on the Boeing 737. Here it is getting its first coat of paint. It looked so cool seeing underneath all the side skirts, the sheet metal. But trust me, when I got the side skirts on and everything was painted, said and done, it had the true World War II battleship look I was going for. And it's so nostalgic. And you're never going to get that out of a yellow submarine 
or a K250 or a K350, any of, any of those like submarines that you can buy plans for and build yourself. I just wasn't going to get that sort of thrill that I got out of designing and building this one. Now, after it was painted, I had to put these huge steel beams on the bottom of the sub. So I had to pick it up with a crane, back its trailer in there, which had the two I-beams on it, and lower it down and weld those beams onto the hull of the sub. These beams is what keeps the sub upright and makes it heavy enough to submerge. So what we did is we got a crane scale, we picked it up, we figured out how heavy it was, we knew what the displacement was, and we had to math out the difference to see how much extra weight we're gonna have to add in order for this thing to submerge under the water. If you enjoy these videos, ask questions in the comments, and like and subscribe. I get a lot of questions on the legalities of building your own submarine, and I'm gonna share a little bit of that information with you. In order to build your own submarine that you wanna put on public water, you are going to have to be a registered manufacturer with the US Coast Guard, which I am. That's how I was able to build the submarine legally and go through the process of putting it on the water. If you wanna hear more of the story, check out my original video, How I Built a Homemade Submarine.